Good morning and welcome to this video. My name is Lars Hokelan and I'm starting now a video series uh, called Purpose in Genesis. Now orig originally I was going to uh, look at the entire Bible but I soon discovered that it's going to be way too much to do this. So what I'm doing is I'm concentrating on um, now my my favourite book of the Bible which is Genesis and uh, what we're going to do we're going to look at purpose here so this uh, part one of uh, purpose in genesis is called purpose in creation and what i'm looking at is uh, genesis chapter 1 verse 1 all the way through genesis chapter 2 and verse 3 so i am not going to read that to you right now so if you want to you can always pause this video you can read through it and uh, then you just start up again and uh, i will go through my notes that i have for this video so i will say what i'm going to say then i'm going to be quiet about it hopefully like i was told in bible college stand up speak up then shut up i have a problem with that last one any hoot um what we're doing with um, purpose is that we're looking at the Bible, that God did write the Bible for a very distinct purpose. And everything we read in the Bible is important. Not all verses are uh, equally important, but everything that is in the Bible is there for us to read. It's for us to understand and to take in and uh, what I'm looking at here in the Purpose in Creation is that uh, the creation story and the regeneration story is pretty much the same. They're very similar. And as we look at the creation week in these verses, we see many things that uh, coincide with the uh, regeneration. Re regeneration, of course, meaning when we are being saved, when we are being born Again, that's what we mean when we talk about regeneration. So first, I will start off by looking at the state of confusion that we see in Genesis and chapter 1. Uh, everybody knows verse 1, of course, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Uh, heavens, really, because it is a plural word. Uh, Shamayim is heavens, not just one heaven obviously talking about the three heavens but that is not the issue of today but verse number two is more interesting it says the earth was without form and void and that's what i want to grab onto there that's our first point the state of confusion now it says that uh, first of all i want to look at uh, number a the confusion we see here in verse number two the earth was without form we read now this means that there was no order nothing was in harmony it was all over the place uh, there was no perfect thing unlike if you go on to verse 31 of chapter one you see that god said that everything was very good because he did a marvelous job creating the world and it was all very good in the end but in the beginning before he really got started he started the building blocks of the universe and uh, there was no perfect thing there it was uh, not much there it was just it was just a mess now this can be likened compared to uh, the man or a man before regeneration because uh, we know that the carnal mind is enmity against God. Uh, we know that before we get to be saved, uh, our lives are full of confusion. And um, spiritual things is foolishness to someone who has not been saved yet. So confusion is very much so in creation, pre-creation, just before this... Uh, uh, six day creation week and also in uh, a person's life before you get saved so the confusion is there 
Now let's see letter B, the emptiness here, still in verse number two, because the earth was without form and void, it says, it was void. The earth was void. Now, void means it was utterly unable to produce anything good. We know that life and faith uh, fullness, or should I say fruitfulness, uh, life and fruitfulness are the gifts of God. God is the one that brings life. He's the one, one that brings fruit, growing. And Romans 7.18 says, In me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. That is uh, Paul speaking here. And this is talking about the void that... Uh, was in uh, in Paul, especially before he got saved, and in all of us before we get saved. There's, there's not no good thing in us. We are void. We are unable to produce anything good uh, before God comes in. Now, man is utterly void apart from the moving of the Spirit. If the uh, God doesn't come in with his Holy Spirit and change us, then uh, we are not able to produce anything good in a real sense. Job 14 verse 4, Job says, Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? And it seems like no one can, but God can. God can bring a clean thing out of an unclean. Let us see there was darkness. It says that darkness was upon the face of the deep. This is also part of the early stage of creation here. Uh, there can be nothing but darkness till the light is sent forth. We know, of course, what this light is. That This light is God, of course. Now, we could have been in darkness on... Uh, um, until now, if it hadn't been for the fact that God commanded the light to shine forth. Second Corinthians 4, 6 says, For God, who uh, commanded the light to shine out of darkness, hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. So it's God that produces the light. It's God that is light, gives us light, and makes everything light instead of darkness. Now, number two I like to see is the work of the Holy Spirit. And I already touched on it somewhat. But in verse two, it says that the Spirit moved upon the waters. And this is talking about the Holy Spirit. Now, the earth may move but uh, its own motion cannot mend it even if the earth was created it was still a mess and it, it could not fix itself it, there never comes order out of chaos uh, the earth needs to be moved up on and you need somebody to do this and obviously this someone is the holy spirit which is part of god now, regeneration is not the outcome of the movements of the na natural heart. It is not. It's the movement of the spirit. So both in creation and in regeneration, we are dependent on the Holy Spirit to do his stuff. So we uh, believe in creation, not in evolution. <clears throat> Second Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So, we are born not out of the will of man, but out of the will of God. We're born of God. This is what regeneration is about. It's not being born a physical creature as we are from birth, but being born as spiritual 
with spiritual lives, a new spiritual beginning. John 6.63 says, It is the spirit that quickeneth, and quickeneth means made alive. If you're dead, you're not very quick, and before we are saved, we are dead in our sins. But it is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. That is Jesus himself speaking. So we should take heed to what he says. Now, point number three today is the power of God's word. And we go down to uh, chapter number, pardon me, uh, of course, it's verse number three, not chapter number three keep saying wrong things once in a while, but you just have to get used to it. Now, what it says in verse 3 of uh, Genesis 1 is that God said, and there was. Now, this happens a lot in the creation week. He spake, and it was done. Now, the word of God is quick and is powerful, we, we read. And this word, this Mighty, moving, recreating energy is the gospel of Christ. Who is Jesus now? He is the Word. John chapter 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with John, uh, was, <laughs> the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So this is talking about Jesus. Jesus is the Word. So here in the first three verses of Genesis chapter 1, you actually have the, the, the Trinity present, you have the Father, then you have the Spirit, and then you have the Word, which is the Son. And uh, um, this Word is uh, mighty, moving, recreating energy that we find in the Gospel of Christ. Now, it is the power of God unto salvation, we are told. And when uh, Jesus in uh, John chapter 11, verse 43, said, Lazarus, come forth. This is the kind of power that was in creation. This was the kind of power that woke up Lazarus from the grave. This is the kind of power that rose Jesus from the grave, as a matter of fact. And this is the kind of power that is in God's word that we see in creation. His word was with power lots and lots of power number four <clears throat> the divine separation we read about it in verse four and five it says that god divided the light from the darkness oh, you know i could talk for hours on this really i mean god separating the light from the darkness now the Word of God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, is working in what we call the new man. Uh, God, he divides the soul from the spirit. He divides the spiritual from the carnal. And it's only natural that in creation he separated light from the darkness, just like he separates the sheep from the goats and, uh, you know, we just know that light and darkness are opposites, don't we? And in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 40 through 18, we read about this. And it says uh, in those verses, What communion hath light with darkness? We are not supposed to mingle with the darkness. We are supposed to stay in the light. We are the children of light. And uh, we'll see more about this as I, as I go on. Uh, number five, the manner of fruit bearing. Then we go down to verse number 11, where we see uh, that it says, yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself. Whose seed is in itself. Now, fruit bearing is the outcome of the light and the moving of the spirit. You've got to have both those two to be able to see any fruits. This is... Uh, the result of a condition, not an effort. It's a, it's a result of what we are, not of what we do. Now, the fruit of 
um, Christ in us will be Christ likeness. That's what the word Christian means. It means being like Christ. In a way, little Christs. If you, if you, if you, if you don't mind, it's talking about being a Christian. The word Christian means that we are looking like Christ. We're supposed to be identical to Christ, and sometimes we don't do very well on that. But uh, we are supposed to uh, produce fruit after His kind with seed in itself. We are supposed to reproduce, to bring forth new Christians, to to uh, to have an effect on this world and see the fruit of God spreading. So there is a different manner of fruit bearing here, and we see that both physical and spiritual. Now, over to number six. The position of the lights, and this is interesting, if you read in verse number 15, you see that uh, the lights were in the firmament to give light upon the earth. That's what it says. Now, the light must be above the earth to shine upon it. It couldn't shine upon the earth if it wasn't above the earth. And uh, the same goes for us. John chapter 17, if you want to read that. But Matthew 5, 14, um, this is, of course, the Beatitudes. Uh, Ye are the light of the world, says Jesus. We are the light and we are not of the world, but we are supposed to be lifted above the world. We also in the future are supposed to be seated in the heavenlies to shine upon it, to shine upon the world. So we are supposed to be light givers here in this world of darkness. Now, number seven is the image of God. We see this in verse number 27. It says that God created man in his own image. And we could also have many, many videos about this, studying the image of God. But uh, this here that we read is the climax of his creative power, okay? Uh, we are created in his own likeness. This is the cherry on the top, you could say. It's uh, He's fin finishing it off the, the creation. He's going out with a bang and he uh, finishes with the, the best thing that he has ever made. And that is man. It is... Um, us created in his own likeness it is uh, the new creation now colossians 3 verse 10 says after the image of him that created him after the image of him that created him and this is talking about this that we are created in the picture of christ just uh, like uh, uh, or we are supposed to be created in the pic uh, picture and the image of of god and of course god was a triune being we believe that man is a triune being i mean the god is the father son and holy ghost the holy spirit and we have a body soul and spirit so we also have three uh, parts you could say uh, and uh, the the great word of the Holy Spirit is, um, or should I say, the great work of the Holy Spirit is to uh, renew the soul uh, after the image of God. When we become Christians, when we become regenerated, we uh, get a new uh, soul after the image of God, where being. Um, made like God in a different way. We're being born in a spiritual life. And both God and man will be satisfied when we are perfect in his likeness. Now, spiritually, 
we know we got a way to go. God is still working on us. Uh, but um, this is still future. But uh, we are to be the image of God. We are supposed to be like God. Uh, number eight is the final point here in this uh, video. Uh, the crown of honor is what we see in verse number 28. When God gave man his dominion. <clears throat> um, power and authority come when we are made like him. Now in the kingdom, later on, we uh, talking about the millennial kingdom, of course, we shall reign with him. And this is also like a, a crown of honor. Now, Revelation chapter 20 and verse 6 says, Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection, and such the second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. Now, talking about being given a crown of glory by God be given honor by God and of course it, our job is to give God the glory and to give him all honor so these are some of the things then that uh, we see when we look at uh, the creation story in, in Genesis chapter 1 we see that it's very like what happens in regeneration so we see that uh, this is written with a very specific purpose for us. It explains things to us. And uh, I hope that this short video can be of some uh, blessing or help for you. Uh, video number two will come soon and we'll be looking at the purpose in the Sabbath. So that is also something that's been... Uh, planned beforehand and it has a very specific meaning for us so uh, until we uh, meet again in another video i pray that uh, god will be with you